In this video, we're going to be testing out a pretty interesting motherboard slash CPU combo from Minus Forum. This is known as the BD795M, and this isn't the first time we've seen something like this from the company. In the past, they have released mini ITX motherboards with integrated CPUs, but this is the first time we're seeing a micro ATX form factor from the company. And basically, what we're getting here is a 16 core, 32 thread Ryzen CPU, and a micro ATX motherboard. With this, you will have to add your own memory, storage, and cooler. And what makes this really interesting is the fact that it's not a desktop CPU. Now, those are swappable. This is actually a mobile CPU. They opted to use the Ryzen 9 7945HX. So again, we have 16 cores, 32 threads. And out of the box with their new desk mini motherboard, this CPU will do up to 100 watts. In this video, I've got a lot to cover with this thing. So before we get started, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. I've been using this site for quite some time now. They offer Steam Keys, Uplay, Ubisoft, but the main thing I pick up over here are Windows 11 Pro Keys. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA, that's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key, and then you can activate Windows. Speaking of that, let's head over to a new PC that I recently built. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from Settings, we're going to go to Activation Settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose Next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. If you're in need of cheap Windows keys, I'll leave a link in the description. And remember, you can use code ETA for 25% off. When it comes to I.O., I'm noticing one thing here that's kind of missing, and that's USB Type-C. Would have been really nice if they added even just a USB Type-C 3.0 port around back here. Again, this board only supports SODIMM DDR5, but we do have a PCIe X16 slot here. It's a 4.0 slot. It supports dual NVMe SSDs. We've also got an M.2 E key so we can add Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It does come with an antenna mount if you want to use that. It supports a regular power supply, so we've got that 24 pin and our 8 pin CPU power. You could go with ATX, SFX, it's really up to you and what kind of build you're going to be putting together. And since we're working with a mobile CPU and have to add our own cooler to this system, they did add a little copper block here. Now, it's pretty interesting what kind of cooler you can use because this supports an LGA 1700. It's a little odd because that's Intel. We've got a Ryzen chip here, but it's just really the way the whole board's laid out. And there's tons of LGA 1700 coolers on the market. You can go liquid or you can go air cooled. And assembly with this whole setup is super easy. I'm going to be adding 32 gigs of RAM. This is 5600, but this will only run it at 5200. I've got a 2 terabyte M.2 SSD. It's a PCIe 4.0 drive. We'll just put it in this top slot here. And if we wanted to add more storage, we've got another free M.2 slot. And this has two SATA 3.0 connectors. Now it's time to get a cooler installed. And like I mentioned, this utilizes an LGA 1700 mount. I'm going with a pretty massive cooler. It's actually the only air cooler that I had laying around in box right now. It's the Thermalrite Peerless Assassin 120 SE. This is good for up to around 220, 250 watts, and we're only going to be running this at 100 watts, so it's going to offer more than enough cooling performance. But I did notice something a bit odd here about the mounting system itself. I would probably want to go liquid cooled just to clean everything up because the way this is set up, I actually had to mount this sideways on the motherboard. Usually with a cooler like this, we'd mount it vertically. We did have to mount it kind of horizontally here because of the way the mount's set up. So instead of moving air from like the front to the back of the case, I'm just going to have it move it from the bottom to the top. And I've just mounted this inside of a low cost Gamdias case that I picked up on Amazon. I've also got a 650 watt power supply. And with that Ryzen 9 7945HX, we do have built in Radeon graphics, but it's not going to be enough to really push AAA games. So for this setup, I've opted to use the Intel Arc B580. This is their special limited edition. 250 when you can find them like that. People are scalping them right now. But this does offer great 1440p performance. Now I've got everything together. Let's go ahead and get this thing booted up. The very first thing I wanted to do here was take a look at the BIOS. And we've got their visual BIOS. Heading into setup uh, from advanced. We've actually got quite a bit that we can change here. CPU configuration. PSS support. Heading back in here, AMD CBS, 
SMU common options, and our system configuration is set to auto. Out of the box, this does 100 watts just fine, and we can actually get a bit more out of it, but we will be testing at 100 watts in this video. What I've been able to do is actually get this up to 122, but we're just gonna leave this to auto and we can go to manual. I set this to 130 and basically from within Windows, 122 is about the max I can hit. So yeah, I mean, we've got a lot that we can actually mess around with here. And at the very bottom, there is AMD overclocking. Precision boost override, we can adjust this. VDDP voltage control. So if you did want to get a bit more out of this or even undervolt this chip, you definitely could with this board. But I'm actually glad to see a lot of this stuff included with the BIOS here. So with this setup, I'm running Windows 11 Pro 7945HX. Like we saw, I did add 32 gigabytes of DDR5. This will only go up to 5200, and I've noticed this with the Menace Forum uh, motherboards. I've got 56 in here, but 52 seems to be the max without any tuning from the BIOS. And of course, we've got the Intel Arc B580. So real quick, I wanted to show you what kind of TDP this is running at. And by the way, I did test out Universal x86 Tuning Utility. This is great if you want to take it up or down just on the fly from within Windows. But we've got CPU-Z here. We'll stress this out. I'll zoom in just a bit. We should be able to get the total TDP right here. And as you can see, we're right there at 102 watts. And with this massive cooler, I'm not worried about overheating or anything like that. In fact, when going up to 120, I didn't have any issues, but I wanted to leave it in its stock form just to see what it does. And yeah, the 7945HX is an awesome performer. First thing I did here was run a few benchmarks. Geekbench 6, single core, 2702, multi, 16,092. And I wanted to put this up against the 14700 non-K variant because recently I put a PC together for a buddy with the same chip. On an MSI board, stock settings, 2716, multi, 17,599. And what makes this kind of interesting is the fact that, yeah, that i7-14700 is a desktop CPU. While the 7945HX is a mobile CPU, albeit we do have a much better cooling system here in this desktop with uh, the Menace Forum board than we would in a laptop. But this is some phenomenal performance this thing's putting out so far. Checking out 3D Mark Steel Nomad. Got a total score of 3,100 with that B580. Fire Strike coming in with a 32,358. And finally, we've got Time Spy here with a 14,475. And with this same card paired up with an i7-14700K, we get a total score across the board of 15,437. So we're definitely not losing a ton of performance here going over to a board like this with the 7945HX. Now we need to check out some gaming with this setup here. And the first one we have is Horizon Zero Dawn Remastered 1440p, very high with XCSS set to balance. Afterburner up in the top left hand corner. Our TDP sitting right there at 100 to 102 watts. Temperatures aren't bad at all, but we do have a massive air cooler on this unit. Up to around 75 with this game, I believe. With over 80% utilization on that 7945HX. Next one I have here is Red Dead 2 1440p maxed out. So with the slider bar, I absolutely hate the way they do it. I've got it all the way to the right hand side. So this is as high as we can take this game at 1440p. Not using any kind of scaling here. So we are at a native 1440, getting an average of around 93 FPS. Here's Starfield, and this is still one of those games that gives us a lot of issues on lower-end cards, and I don't consider the B580 a low-end card. It is a nice budget card for 1440, but with this, we did need to enable some frame gen in order to get up over that 60 mark. Without frame gen, just using XESS, even set to performance at 1440 high, this does dip under 60 FPS. God of War Ragnarok, this game runs great on this setup here. We're at 1440 high with XCSS set to balance. And yeah, I mean, obviously that 7945HX can keep up with the B580. I think even with something like an RTX 4070 Ti, we'd be fine with the CPU. It does offer more than enough performance to keep up with the GPU like that.
And finally, Cyberpunk 2077 1440 Ultra XESS set to quality. If you're using an art card, XESS automatically goes to that setting there. We're seeing an average of around 84 FPS. This is more than enough. And again, taking a look at the CPU temps, this is way lower than I thought it would be, even with this massive cooler. Now I know the cooler itself is made for around 225 watts, but I wasn't expecting to be, you know, under 70 with a game like this. So overall, performance is great with the BD-795M. I knew it would be. We've got that Ryzen 9 7945HX, and we've tested it at about 80 watts in their mini ITX version. But being able to take this up to 100 watts and even 120 with a boost is pretty awesome. And with this setup here, I wanted to give you an idea about CPU temps. And it's really not fair because this is real overkill. That Thermal Ride Assassin 120SE is just way too much for this system. But that's what I had in box. I figured I'd go ahead and slap it on here. It does fit an average CPU temps while gaming, 72 degrees Celsius. And the maximum this thing hit was 78 degrees Celsius. And I'll tell you what, these fans didn't kick up loud at all. I'd say they probably hit a maximum of 40 to 50%. It was pretty quiet when it was running. I really didn't have to worry about CPU temps. But I do like the way they've got this set up. Performance is great. I mean, you could build a work machine. You could build a gaming machine with something like this. And if you're interested in learning a little more about the Menace Forum BD-795M, I'll leave links in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. If there's anything else you want to see running with this board, be it a different GPU, different operating system, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.